very warm and blessed welcome to each and every one of you here today. Welcome from all over the world. We are glad that you are here with us from the north and the south and the east and the west of the world. There are too many countries for me to welcome each and every one of you. But if you are here and you can hear me well, can you please give me a thumbs up so that I know that I'm not talking to myself, but I'm talking to you this evening. Welcome to the upper room, the place where the Holy Spirit will come and fill us and shape us and make our lives. We are here this evening to know and to hear what God is saying to us so that we can make adjustment. This evening, I wanna begin and just really, uh, I just felt this evening to speak to you from my heart as uh, before Papa comes and, sh and uh, gives us the impartation of the Holy Spirit into our lives because we are here not to hear a message, but we are here to begin to receive all that God has for our lives. You know, um, Isaac began when one day when Papa was reading the scriptures and as he read the word Isaac, the word International Strategic Alliance of Apostolic Churches was born. He never wanted to start a network, but God somehow by his divine mercy and grace knew that this man carries a pattern to impact the city, influence every nation. And so the journey began. And each and every one of you, if I asked you this today to share how you got connected, it will definitely be by a supernatural means. Why did we get connected? We got connected because what God was doing in your heart and what God was doing in my heart was connected to what God was doing in the heart of Dr. Jonathan David, or as we know him, as Papa Jonathan and Mum Helen. If you agree with me, please give me a thumbs up. If you, that is your experience. I think many of you, as I, um, as I begin to ask you and, and just uh, share and talk and how do you get connected? A lot of stories that I hear, that I hear are stories that somehow when you hear a voice or you picked up a book or something happened somewhere that could, your heart got connected, your heart got connected because something happened something was already happening inside of our hearts that was the same that was inside of his heart. The whole concept of Isaac is this, that God begins to raise a person like Papa Jonathan in the pattern of Abraham as a father to many nations. We as sons become Isaac simply meaning that we give ourselves fully, we give ourselves fully to Abraham to begin to take us to the mountain to, 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 give, to give him a unconditional obedience that we together with him would be connected. And as Abraham took Isaac to the mountain to be sacrificed, Isaac did not struggle. Isaac did not say no. In the same way, why am I sharing this? Because I felt this, this afternoon that many times, many times we are hearing a message to build our own ministry. We are hearing a message to build our own churches. We are hearing a message for many different reasons. But I know that God has connected us together to do what is in his heart. That's why when David said to Solomon at the end in 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 9, maybe we can look at that in 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 9. I'm just sharing what I feel strongly in my spirit so that everything that is coming from the heart of God into the heart of Papa will flow to us because we're accurately aligned and we understand the purpose of why we are in Isaac. We are not in Isaac for Papa to build us. We are in Isaac so that we give our lives to do what is God has called him as a father, as an arrowhead, to finish the destiny that is there. You don't join the army for the army to help you fight your war. We join the army so that we can help our nation to fight their war. So we're not here, we're not receiving, we're not taking to fulfill what is in our heart, the ambitions in our hearts, the things that we wanna do, the prides that we have, the goals that we have, we're not here for that. We're here because in the beginning, God connected us. God connected us divinely. 
Because whatever that you receive and what we receive is for us to begin to build our churches as a womb to give birth to men and women of the Holy Spirit. This is why every message is coming to us. 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 9. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. Serve him with a loyal heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understand all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will be cast you off, cast you off forever. 1 Chronicles 28. The background to this is that David is about to die. And when, um, uh, when, a, when a dying man gives his last words, I think it is very, very vital. Won't you agree? Yes. You know, David is trying to sum up everything about his life and pass on what God has begun inside of him so that Solomon can continue the work that God began. If you know that God, God is a God of continuity, he doesn't want to start something, finish, and then he has to start it all over again. God is a God of continuity. That's why the patterns of fathers and sons is the last thing that is mentioned in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, in the book of Malachi, in the Old Testament, the hearts of the fathers must turn to the sons and the hearts of the sons must turn to the fathers. Then I will heal the land, the Bible says. And then we see in the book of Matthew chapter 3, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. A pattern begins to emerge that was always in the heart of God from the beginning. And David begins to understand that God is a God of continuity. And because God is a God of continuity, he begins to let Solomon know what needs to happen. He says, as for you, my son, Solomon, know the God of my father. We must know the same God. We must have the revelation, the same revelation that God, the same God that shaped the life of Papa, the same God that gave him the bad virtues, gave him the value, gave him the mission, gave him the vision, gave him everything, the same purpose, the same God that began to minister to him now must work in our heart to produce the same life, to produce the same virtue, to produce the same understanding. If that begins to happen in our lives, the fathers and the sons will connect. This is what God, this is what David was telling Solomon. Solomon, continue the work. Finish the work. Continue the work that began inside of me. Don't let it die. But now I'm passing the baton to you. In order for me to pass the baton to you, understand why God has called me. God did not call me just for you to build a temple, for you to be rich and for you to sit in, your, in the temple and enjoy. It. No, that's not what God has called. God has called me to build him a house, to build him a house so that all nations, this house shall be called the house of prayer so that all nations will come. So, so David began to explain to Solomon, as for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. This is the three components that made the life of David. And now David begins to lay the pattern, lay the foundation and say, listen, you are not connected to me so that you can do your own thing. You're connected to me because I'm connected to God and the God that's connected to me has shaped my life, made my life took out every ambition, took out every pride, took out every flesh, took out every de desire, took out what I want and put my life in his hands and say, God, I'm willing. And I say to you, if this begins to happen in our life, more and more truth will come into us. Understanding the same understanding that has come in the life of Papa will come inside of our life. And what will happen? Our churches will become a womb, a womb to give birth to men and women who will carry the pattern, who will carry the passion, who will carry the power of the Holy Spirit, who will carry the prophetic, who will carry the posture of the Holy Spirit, who will carry the paradigms of, of God. They, they will now understand that they are, they are not in the church just to continue to build more and more numbers, but they are designed, they are, they are patented so that they can, from the church, the church becomes a ground to, the church becomes a birthing place to birth inside of them the patterns for the, the marketplace, the, the, the church is a place where they, 
the life of God is birthed into them to carry the passion of God into the marketplace, into every domain, into every place. So we know that we are not just receiving this message so that we can, we can do whatever we want in our heart. We're not just receiving this message so that we can just begin to fulfill our desire, our dreams, our, our ambition, our goal. No, we are connected to, to be connected for this reason, to do what God has designed for us to do, that what is in our heart and what is in the heart of Papa is the same because we are wanting to know the God of our Father. I pray as we take some time this evening to pray and to begin to align ourselves, align our heart, align our mind, ask God, Lord, I want to know the God of my Father. I just don't want to know the God of salvation. I just don't want to know the God that blessed me. I just don't want to know the God that helped me. I just don't want to know the God that will fulfill what is in my heart. What is, what is the desire of my heart? God is not coming to fulfill what is the desire of your heart. If that is, that is why we are here. Let me tell you, whatever you hear, what, when you interpret it, the understanding that you will have will be self-centered, will be self-centric. But the moment that you have desired to now put it down like Isaac, allow Abraham to take you to the mountain, take you to the mountain and sacrifice you and empty yourself and both willing, Abraham and Isaac are connected together and together we will now produce another generation that will bring impact. Father, we pray this evening, oh God, even as Papa comes, Lord, we, we align ourselves. Why we are in Isaac? What is the reason, oh Father? Why the reason we are connected? We are not connected to do what is in our heart. We want to know the God of our Father. We want to know, Father, we want to, we want to serve him. We want to serve you, God. We want to serve you with a loyal heart. We want to serve you with a willing mind, oh Father. We pray today, oh God. We ask you today, oh Father, align us, shape us, shape us, oh Father. Let the same God, let the same revelation of who God is to Papa and Mama, oh God, let it be to us. Open our eyes, oh God. Open our eyes that we may see the same God, the same manifestation, the same understanding, the same virtue, the same value, the same passion, the same pattern, the same of the prophetic, the same posture. Lord, we pray, deal with us this evening, oh Father God, that the same God of our Father will be our God so that fathers and sons of oh Father, that we truly, truly understand what is the meaning to be in Isaac, oh Father. It's not just a term, it's not just and understanding is just not a nice term of oh father but i pray oh god is a place of sacrifice it's a place to go with our father to the mountaintop and allow him to put us on the altar and say god take everything of oh god take our life make our life one more time oh father we thank you this evening oh father we open our hearts wide oh god sow a divine seed in our heart and in our mind oh lord as we prepare our heart and our mind for you this day oh lord we thank you we love you we honor you lord in jesus mighty name we pray and every Everybody say amen and amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to pass the time to Papa, even as he comes, and we thank God as we align ourselves and understand the formation of Isaac in our life. Over to you, Dad. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, name that is higher than every other name. And when you speak that name, demons flee. I thank you, Jesus, right now for the touch of, the, of God upon every life. Let the power of your spirit flow in such a powerful way that our lives will never be the same again. Lord, we will break this avalanche of deception that's coming. In fact, it's already in the world. God's going to give us special strength this week that we will be able to touch something supernatural because you must remember April to September. Now we are now in October. So run, catch up tonight, and put your spirit right into what God is about to do. He's about to change your life and give you His life. He's going to change you deeper and deeper so that you become like from Christ inside your life. Now, we are finalizing tonight the avalanche of deception, so I'm going to cover a lot more grounds so that you know that what is coming is is under the activity of Satan himself. Deception everywhere. They say, lie about this, and then they lie about that. They, they go to court, yes, to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And then the, when they open their mouth, immediately you see, you can hear lies. But I pray the spirit of truth will be upon our lives. Amen? The spirit of truth must be upon our lives. Right now, number one, the attack of deception is the first sign of his 
of demonic oppression. The tangle of deception is the first sign of, his, of the demonic oppression. The attack is faceless. You go into the computer, you just Google anybody, anything that you want. Information is coming out. It's called an information highway. And it's dangerous to stand in a highway on your own. It's dangerous to be in the pathway of the enemy pushing. So tonight I'm going to give you the seed, courage to change, courage to change the world. In, in, in Isaac, we know that when, the, when there's an attack that comes, especially with deception, it starts with the world of error, you know, and that's, that's why we've got to be careful. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the Lord made. He said to the woman, indeed, as God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden. Mainstream media has an agenda. Everyone has an agenda, just whether it's pure, whether it's false. But I believe God wants to put his agenda in our hearts so that we can become laborers for him in this day, in this hour. The attack of deception is the first sign of his coming. Number two, they, they speak to us as though they have full authority over our life. Or they speak to us as though they have full authority over our lives. In fact, now what's happening is you're not given a choice. They make up their mind for you. The system is changing. That's why many pastors are going to lose out if you're not careful, if you're not sharp in the spirit, you suddenly realize that they've taken everything out of your hand. Family out of your hand. Now children out of your hand. You know, and what kind of food can come in, what kind of food cannot come in, who can go, who cannot go. You can see instructions everywhere. This is to get the church ready. God allowed this to happen so that the church can be ready because the others that are coming, the other systems that are coming in, has more, more power, more, it's more uh, radical as well as more extreme, and this is the danger. So they speak to us as one who had authority over, over our lives. You must know the authority that is above you is the Lord Jesus Christ. Authority doesn't flow from down upwards. It moves from up downwards. Are you confused? Not eastward, not westward. But when, when the Spirit of God sh showed me what was about to happen, I immediately tried to put these things into uh, information so that we can dispense information. So many people die of diseases which could have been easily prevented. And the change of lifestyle, but yeah, having the right information. The woman was suffering, you know, in Luke, Chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, I was not here last week, did you miss me? Look in verse 17 of Luke 6. Oh, let's look at chapter 7. I think I'll, I'll come to chapter 7. Chapter 7 of Luke. And in verse 7 and 8. For this reason I did not even consider my, myself worthy to come to you, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under place under authority. So you gotta be under in order to be over. Those who are above us, we are under them, under managers and teachers until the day we mature. 
so that we can handle our life. One of the key things that we need to teach our children is how to make the right decision and why. How to make the right decision for God and why. You know, if you learn it too late, you lose everything. The Bible is clear. You see, for this reason, I did not want to come because I'm a man under authority. But just say the word, my servant will be healed. You know, there's going to be a radical flow of faith that's going to come. When the pastor and the preacher begin to preach, what's going to happen is that your life is going to change because we are not going to talk, but we're going to impart. And you cannot impart anything that's not, not, not really you. So you can see the true authority is, is Christ or Christ giving it to us because he is now made the head of the church. And they, he gave his name to the church. He gave his life for the church. He, 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 finally, the Bible talks about the marriage feast of the Lamb. And that's, so, that's, that's amazing because you can feel time nearer and nearer and nearer. You're one week nearer to heaven. That's how far heaven is, not far. It's just on the other side. Important thing is this, that while you're listening to what God is saying, you, you must be prepared to reject what you believe that is wrong. You must allow God to challenge you, the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says for 12 years she went to every physician, every doctor, every new medicine, every new hospital. She tried everything for 12 years. If you are struggling that long, what do, you, what, do you, what do you need? You need to hear. I say you need to hear a different message coming closer and closer to you. A message that will change our lives forever because the power of the Lord was flowing out from him and he was healing them all. They are speaking to us as one, as though they have authority over our lives. You know, now even the security guard, don't act like security guard. Then you have, you know, you have all kinds of people rising up and the, the atmosphere is just becoming cloudy and hazy and the avalanche of deception comes under the activity of Satan himself. That's why today, I, People must love the spirit of truth. Number three, people must love the spirit of truth. I want to cover as much as I can today. So if you are writing slowly, then just listen and go back and rewrite it so that the word of God will not be missed out. The Bible says when they have no understanding, when the word of the kingdom is sown and they have no understanding, the devil will snatch away the seed because the seed is a production of the next generation. Seed is going to become a tree. A tree will have many fruits and many, many nuts and so on and so forth. So that one time you only have just a single small thing. And if you work at it, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Amen. Without the spirit of truth in our inner, inner man, without the Spirit of truth in the inner man. Our conscience cannot be fully activated. There is one power that you must exert and use because I'm sh showing you that Satan has a plan. And sometimes his people, those who live under him, jump start. All right. And so you see the chaos in the kingdom of darkness. At this moment, I believe the Spirit of God is sending His angelic hosts to watch over our lives and bring us into a place that's free from devil, free, devil-free zone, sickness-free zone. That's why the Spirit of truth must be in our hearts. Can you say amen to that? Honor the word with all your heart, soul, and strength, because the whole earth will pass away. 
but not his word. So that's the thing that lasts the longest. And the Bible says in one, Psalms 138, Psalms 138, Psalms 138, this is, this is very special. This is very special because you, you, you realize that God has put some things in, in, in order and that's absolute. He can do whatever he wants to do. He can choose any man. He's not respectful of people because he made them. He can raise them up. He can raise kingdoms, dis destroy kingdoms. That's the power that we have in our God. I just, maybe I should share, share this with you because you may have a different childhood. In my childhood days, I used to watch Bugs Bunny. If you don't know, it doesn't matter. You're not going to go anywhere else. Bugs Bunny was running away from a lion chasing him. So Bugs went and hid under the boulders. The, he, he lives there. The lion roared. It, its voice began to rattle everything around about. And then I heard the Lord say to me, But Bugs Bunny is, is bigger and greater, stronger than the lion that's coming in because the whole boulder that was set there became his hiding point. When you're in Christ, the devil do, do a lot of things to get you out into flesh. But God don't want us to do that. He wants us to face the devil square. How, how, do you do, how, how do you do that? The Bible says you must be born, born of the Spirit so that you can really live the life of the Spirit. Supernaturally, I think in this year, before this year is over, before you count December 31st and going on for 22, I believe there is a maturing in our spirit that will give us a momentum, a stir within our hearts so that we can be aligned and adjusted. There's been a quick, quick acceleration of maturity in the inner man. That's why I say the spirit of truth must be in there. Psalms 138 verse 2. Psalms 138 verse 2. I'll bow down towards your old holy temple and give thanks to you to your name for your loving kindness and your truth for you have magnified your word above to all your name can you imagine god spoke the word he made a, made a pledge and he put an oath in two of these two unchangeable things the bible says that God fulfilled the promise, gave the promise to Abraham. Abraham, after 25 years, received that kind of faith. That's why when you watch Abraham, you see his life, study his life, you know that there is a supernatural power to go forward to a place that you don't know, only he knows. I want to pray right now that you will find that pathway of the Spirit in Jesus' name. I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to fall upon you in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now that the Spirit of God sweep over our nation. And we thank God, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him with all your heart. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. There will be no weapon formed against you that will prosper. Every scheme of the enemy will be found out and the light will dispel darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, second, the thing that is very important is 
the love for the spirit and the word must be in our hearts. So that the deception is darkness. And when it comes to light, the Bible says God called darkness out of, of light out of darkness. Only God can do that. I say you took light out of darkness. How do you do that? Only God knows. In the same way, your life will never be the same again. Why? Because God has come into your life, He's taken over, He's crossing over this land before you. So take, take care so that you be excellent and aligned and adjusted. Now, write this, write this down. The prophets of God who are speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the prophets of God who, who are speaking for God will be displaying the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. The prophets speaking for God. They are going to bring in a supernatural dimension of authority, positioning, and breakthroughs. I believe that the avalanche of deception that's coming is, is a voice. Said so the serpent spoke to the woman, it's a voice. So he tells us here that there is a massive effort. So they shut the church. That's why you wear your mask. You don't talk after that. If you put it on your, on your nose, you find it hard to breathe. These are all signs and wonders. And this is just the beginning. That's why you must listen to the prophetic words so that you are accurately and sharp so that the enemy will not invalidate the word. Jesus said you are experts in using human tradition and putting supernatural dimensions to it so that they can continue on for the, for the rest of the generation. But God is going to give to you this prophetic anointing so that you will not compromise, so that you will, the word will proceed from your mouth. Why should God speak to you if you are not going to listen? You are not going to do? Even if it shows you vision of everything. But if you don't want to do it, it won't be done. Many are trying to shut down the prophets. In fact, if you look at scripture, scripture says, which prophet have they not killed? I didn't hear anything about which teacher they did not kill. You can teach what is wrong. There will still be followers who are ignorant. But this impartation comes differently. I want you to be strengthened this week so that we can face the avalanche and the attack of the enemy. But don't, let, don't stop listening to prophets. Because they are the first ones to know what is about to happen. And when the devil knows they are the first one, they will try to use you to destroy them and shut them. But yet the Bible says, believe in the prophets and you will succeed. Believe in God and you will not fail. Surely the Lord does nothing until he tells his secret plans to his servant the prophet. Even in heaven, there is an order for prophetic dimension. There is an order. There is a supernatural dimension of the spirit that is going to come so that you can see what's about to happen. Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 speaks about Jesus among the candlestick, among the churches, what he is doing, what he gave them, what they were to contain, what they were to multiply, so that came with the instruction. But if you but if you see if you see the prophetic people, they are not just uh, hearing it, but they have the power to do it. 
because they know the process. The scripture says to us in the scripture is great. Without the word, you're not going to go very far. Deception is is spreading very fast because people are ignorant. Even the deception has entered the corridors of power. You see, government has been controlled by demonic spirits. Men who are serving the, the people are exploited. So many things are happening everywhere. But as for you and I, we take the prophetic word and use the prophetic word to pray, use the prophetic word to speak into people's life, so that as the Holy Spirit intercedes within us and begin to pray to God according to the will of God for that situation. That's why the, the book that I try, I'm trying to finish so that you can have it is our prevailing prayer, executing God's mandate, kingdom mandate, so that you can see that how you handle yourself now will give you extra advantage so that you know what to do, how to fight and how to push away the powers of darkness. Without this proceeding prophetic word, nothing is created. Many times we want new things, but you, you will not find new things because you have not thrown away the old. You got to throw away the old and what does not work and keep it out of your life so that you truly directly connect with Jesus. This is the time and season where shepherds are helping you, guiding you, but your job is to get nearer and nearer to God the Father. Use what they teach you, love what they, what they do for you, but you, you must have a personal, strong, anointed, loving, uh, love of God, passionate, passionate love of God in your heart. The avalanche of deception is coming because the devil is going to release many false prophets. So be careful what you hear, be careful who you hear it from because there's going to be an av avalanche. Let me, let me challenge you a little bit. I'm sure, I'm sure you're beginning to realize that we're going to carry an upper room right to the end of December. So just, just to let you know that you can pray yourself and begin to see something supernatural happen. Come, come with me this, this evening. The avalanche of deception is spreading because the spirit of truth it's not maturing in your life. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. This is the first introduction of the Holy Spirit to the apostles. And this is what he said in chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. Are we there? Say, are we there? I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may be with you forever. It is a spirit of truth whom the world cannot know, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or, or know him, because he does not see him or know him, but you know him, because he abides with you and will be in you soon. I'm, I'm believing that this transformation is going to come so, so, so supernaturally that you will find that it's easy to cross into the other side. The, your problems are going to get smaller. Hello, I say your problems are going to get smaller because you're going to become a spiritual giant. 
And that's going to be very important. God's going to take you up to the next level because deception can only be fought with the spirit of truth. With the spirit of truth. If the spirit of truth is, is false, then if the spirit of truth does not come to you, what will happen is that you will accumulate knowledge and understanding and tilt towards the extreme side. The reason why I'm saying this is that's what's happening to a lot of people. They have a small vision, maybe the spiritual vision. They saw something like maybe a waterfall, a, a throne, a bird flying. You, you can see that this is actually all built into you. In the night time you're praying and you get, you get into a trance and then you sense the presence of God very strongly upon your life and you dream that you are like an eagle flying free. So somebody asked me, I said, well, what is the interpretation? The interpretation is this, in your spirit you want to be free, but in your body and soul you are afraid to do anything. So when that happens, God's, you cannot contain what God has for you. Every one of us must have our eyes open, ears open, to see what God is doing and see what He is doing inside your heart. Philippians, it, it, it tells us that you've got to work out what God is working in. So if God's not working in, then you cannot work out because there's nothing to work out with. Chapter Philippians, I almost said Philippines. Verse 12 and 13. So then, my beloved, chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Are you ready? So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. This is an amazing word, because the Bible tells us that God's going to work in your heart. What is he going to work in your heart? What, what kind of work is he doing? So that he will work so deep in your heart so that both the will and to work, uh, work for his good pleasure. He will align your will with his will. He adjusts your life with his life. And that's what's going to happen. When God works inside your heart, what is he doing? He's adjusting you. He's challenging you. He's from, you know, he wants you to rise up and become stronger and stronger. I believe if you, if you know what to do, if you allow the Holy Spirit to work deeper and deeper in your heart, the power of God that's going to manifest is going to be supernatural. Because chapter 3 of Ephesians tells us about this, this, this dimension of power. Ephesians Chapter, chapter 3, verse 20. Chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. I, I want to say to you, this upper room experiences, uh, ex direct experiences of the Holy Spirit. When you leave this place tonight, the Holy Spirit will fall afresh upon your life. That is a promise. A promise of conditions. If you're not seeking Him, how He will he call you out? But if you are engaged in the right action, not just any action. One, one, one young, young, young lady was so involved in prayer, she never came out to open the door to see anybody else. Who will you marry? 
there's none. Maybe the guy was standing outside the door and you're praying continually. There's never been a chance to meet. I'm sharing this thought with you. To he, now to him who is able to do. The God that we serve is the God who will do it. If he said it, he will do it. According to your word, we will cast out our net. Because the man said, he, he too is a man under authority. I say to one, go, and he goes. And I say to one, the other, come, and he comes. And I say to this man, do this job, he does it. So my authority moves people. I say when the authority begins to come upon your life, you start to move people. Move them, reposition them. So you have a supernatural uh, anointing. You have a supernatural anointing to pastor your work. The problem with us is that we, we don't want to do it any other way except the old way that you've seen. And after a short while, you, you find that the ministry doesn't become effect, effective anymore. Can you imagine a pastor going on visitation? Monday he goes to somebody else's house, they cook food, they cook fresh fish, fresh vegetables and fresh prawns and so on and so forth. So he eats lunch in one house, then dinner in another house because the church is very hospitable. What you don't realize is that you'll become a hospital soon. Why? Because if the pastor drinks two cup, one cup of coffee, in every house that he visits. Can you imagine how many, how many cups there are? And it's all on one person. So this is a conspiracy to kill you. Sometimes we don't realize that how, how dangerous it is to take one cup of coffee here with milk and sugar, and coffee here, milk and sugar. Just count the number of cups of drinks that your, your church members give to you when you visit them. I want you to remember that this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. But what God is working within inside us is going to be manifesting. I believe very strongly in the next 20 years, from 2020 to 2040, that the next 20 years are going to be very special because that will seal the second coming of the Lord Jesus in a fresh new way. I, I have more confidence to believe that he's coming sooner than we are talking about. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be amazing. The whole world will see him descending from heaven with a shout. And he will slay the serpent with the breath of his nostril. So this is the God that we are serving. This same Jesus will return. This Jesus who is going to be exalted, not just resurrected, exalted, and receive, his, receive a new name, Receive the Holy Spirit. All right. He is the Spirit of Truth. He will unlock the, the Scriptures. And the Bible says is more than you can ask or think. We are trying to, in our mind, trying to imagine what we should do in, in our, with our mouth and faith. We are trying to ask God to do this, do the other. But the key is actually you. God has no power... He has, he has more power than you think. He is not equal with Satan. Hello? He is not equal with Satan. He was created by the word of God. His light is not as... You know, it's, have you been in a, in, in a club where you, you see there is a... A mirror around the lamb and then wherever the lamb turns it, rece it receives light from different angles and you can see the color you can see like the whole thing spinning around the Holy Spirit has given to us a clear indication this year this year all right don't, don't talk about next year this year God will align so many things because so many things have gone wrong in, in the kingdom as well as in the, in, in the world. So many things have gone wrong. God is realigning. That's why you can see all the basic teachings are coming back again. 
following God, hearing God's voice. You know, and that's that's why because people have believed in a lie for so long. The woman with the issue of blood, I hearing the woman with the issue of blood. For twelve years, she tried and tried and tried. Went to this doctor and went to that physician, many physicians, and she didn't get better. She got worse. We cannot blame her for. For being ignorant, virtually, then the Bible says that. Then she heard about Jesus. You will receive in the upper room truth and revelations that will set you your future free. You can just enter into into the future plans that God has given to you without resistance. Why? Because the word of God is coming forth. The word of God is changing, aligning. That's why I believe that many of you in this upper room experience, you will actually receive that dimension of God, so that your life will never be the same again. Your family will never be the same again. When he, when Elijah felt the mantle of Elijah in First Kings seventeen, you realize that he had a foretaste of what was happening. But fourteen years later, he and Elijah cross over the river Jordan, and Elijah asked him, "Ask me for you never ask me. Ask me for what you want." He said, "I want a double portion of your spirit." He says, "You have asked for a hard thing. I think, I think if you record your prayers and listen to it again, you'll be embarrassed." Of the things we ask, or the things that we think, like telling telling your mother who is a good cook and who cooks well for you and looks after you as though, say, "Ma, will I have food when I come back from school?" It's an insult. Some of our prayers just need to be changed. So you want to change? I said, "Do you want to change?" The Bible tells us very clearly: Let the Holy Spirit work deep in your heart. When you work in your heart, you have to outwork what 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 we what the Holy Spirit is doing. Come with me to chapter three, same chapter, Ephesians chapter three. I want you not to be afraid. Of what you are going to hear the next few minutes, God has prepared His people in the right places. You may not know, but He tells His prophets what to do. I believe very strongly I, I believe very strongly that some of you are going to rise up and See your city being taken supernaturally. Some of your churches will break forth in in worship. Some will break forth in prayer. Some will break forth in in prophecy. Some will break forth in the end time messages, and they know how to link the scriptures to scripture. Let one scripture explain another another scripture, rather than the mind trying to uh, decipher whatever God is saying. Look at this chapter one, chapter three, verse one and two. For this reason, I Paul, sorry, Ephesians chapter three, verse one and two. For this reason, I Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for for your sake and of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace which was given to me for you. Now. Try to figure out in your own life who actually brought some breakthroughs in your life. Like many of the school of the prophet students came. Some of them came. They have told God and said, "God, if you don't touch me at the school of prophets, I'm going to leave the ministry." One wanted to commit suicide. 
But the Holy Spirit came strongly in, in, in our training sessions and arrested the attention to what he can do. Within a, snap, in a short moment of time, they, they were completely well healed, delivered, set free. You are going to experience the same thing. In Jesus' name, I'm breaking down every stronghold of the enemy in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. But there will be no stones left unturned because God will not allow you to be contaminated by the powers of darkness. He wants you to rise up and become and receive your light so that darkness can leave you. Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name that they cannot silence the prophets because you are speaking from heaven to the prophets and the prophets are hearing. In chapter 2 of Hebrews, chapter 2 of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2. Are you there? All right. For this reason, we must pay much closer attention, verse 1, attention to what we have heard, so that we not, will not drift away from, from him. We must pay close attention. Why? Because when the days of fulfillment is, is coming, don't miss your chance. The time of fulfillment is coming, but you, you struggle in something else. And when God begins to come in, you cannot find you, you cannot, you are lost in the world of your own. Uh, we had a pastor friend of ours. She said to God, God, I, I, I need to go and take a shower. And please let the bus arrive at 5 o'clock that evening that, because it was a bus stop. You know what a bus stop is? Where the bus stops. Uh, some of our buses are dangerous. They stop in the middle of the road and be talking to each other. Now, let me say this. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers, through the prophets, in many portions and in many ways. So we know in part, we prophesy in part. If you don't have the other half of what you're carrying, somebody else will have it. You don't have to project yourself. You don't have to rise and try to win the, everybody else as though you are somebody. And you become nobody for that reason. In these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. What God is speaking through the apostles will lay the strong foundation for your church to rise. I have seen the future. It's two parallel roads. One for those who are saved, and one for those who are who, that rejected Christ. The two roads are going to be parallel. They're going to go there's nobody can stop them. If you're wicked, you'll become more wicked. If you're righteous now, when the time of God comes in, you'll be more righteous. The content of the heart and the attitude of people is going to measure them up or down. In chapter 2, verse 1, for this reason, we must pay much closer attention to, to it. What we have heard, as we retain. Why look at verse 2? For if the word spoken through angels prove unutterable, and every transgression and disobedience receive a just penalty, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? God has big plans for you. I say God has big plans for us. One of the most amazing thing is you're sleeping at night and you've taken a stone from that, from that place, put it as an anointed stone 
to build the house of God. That's why, that's why Jacob, when he was touched by God in a supernatural way, he said, your name is no longer Jacob, but Israel, because you have prevailed with God. You have risen with God, and you, and, and you won the favor. I, pr I pray that God will supernaturally give you a love for the spirit of truth. Because the spirit of truth is the only one that can ex expel the spirit of error. Deception, the spirit of truth will destroy it. How shall we escape if we neglect such salvation? After it was first spoken through the Lord. So it was first spoken through the Lord. It was confirmed to us by the, those who heard it, that's the apostles. And God also testifying with them, both by signs and wonders, and by various miracles, and my, my gifts, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he, he, for he did not subject the, the, to angels the world to come, concerning which we are speaking. But one has testified somewhere, saying, What is man that you remember him, or the son of man that you are concerned about? You have made him a little lower than the angels, but you will crown him with glory and honor, and have appointed him over the works of your hands. You will put all things in subjection under his feet. For in subjecting all things, he left nothing that is not subject to him. But now we do not yet see all things subjected to him. But we see Jesus. Oh, let me tell you this. The word that God wants to speak to us is just as amazing. The Bible says that he spoke through prophets before. In bits and small bits and pieces here. Uh, two jigsaw puzzle. But there's a, a thousand others that are missing. But what God is going to do is this. He's going to show you the importance of the word. And the spirit of truth. The life of truth impartation of truth all these dimensions are just going to flow so get yourself ready i said get yourself ready because god is coming by his spirit to keep us in not only close to him but show us how we can get close to 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 his heart the holy spirit is going to teach you he's going to touch your spirit and you you will have in, intuitive uh, expression because you will you will know by by the spirit you will know like I read the scripture for you that the stewardship of God's grace was given to me for you that means Paul says that I'm carrying something in my heart in my life I'm, I receive it from the Lord so that I can sow it into the life of the people Paul said I long to see you so that I can find some fruits what fruit fruit of his labor, really expressed in, in the book of Romans. The Bible says he did not, he did not subject to angels the world to come, concerning which we are speaking. The word of God is becoming more and more, more and more real because he is speaking so clearly. He is clear. God is clear. Only the cloud cloudy the minds of people and when they start to prophesy they get contaminated water they become contaminated seed but the word of god the bible says will not come to an end the whole world will be destroyed but his word will not fall to the ground if you look at chapter 3 of hebrews Chapter 3 of Hebrews, and in verse 7, Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as when they provoked him. Today when you hear, what is your depth of response? Because that depth of response in your heart will make you become a partaker of the heavenly calling, a taker of Christ, 
become the partaker of the Holy Spirit, partaker of whole holiness, and the partaker of the power of of His Word. If you look that in the Scripture, the Bible says that we are going to partake something fresh. Are you ready for this stuff? I can't hear you. I said, are you ready for this sound? What what is about to happen and near enough the next 10, 20 years? Zion will merge with the net, with the church unusual. Chapter 12 of the chapter 12. The Bible is speaking to us about coming to Mount Zion in comparison to the blazing flame that comes from the mountain. When Zion and the supernatural church merge together, God's kingdom will come. See that the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till all your enemies are destroyed. God is going to do that. Today, some viruses that came out from a laboratory, where else they are breeding it, we don't know. Somebody may do something else. And it's almost coming to chemical warfare. But the Bible is clear and sure that you have two parallel roads that will not meet each other. That's why the lion and the lamb will dwell together. The most wicked person can be changed because his blood has cleansed every one of us, bought us. Jesus paid the highest price. He was the highest bidder. The devil could not outsmart him or beat him. He bought us with his own blood. He now lives in our life, in our, body, in our body. The word of God is getting stronger and stronger. I want to quickly lend, lend you an important statement that will change your life. The spirit of holiness the spirit of holiness cannot be duplicated by the devil. Spirit of holiness cannot be cannot be turned into or or The Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness. The devil cannot fake it. Miracles he can do. He can, he can, there are a lot of people who are not Christians who are involved in demonic powers and so on and so forth. So they can get things going in a certain measure. But they all come to an end. God is giving you an opportunity maybe for the first time, some people for the last time, that you should receive His Word and receive your birthright and receive your blessings. I sense in my spirit today that people say there's a famine of the Word and the Spirit. No, there's no famine. The Bible says the, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli and the Word of the Lord was rare in those days and visions were infrequent. The connections are getting stronger and stronger. That's why we're walking out of Eli's type of ministry, walking into not even Aaronic type of ministry, not the Midianite priest, not the Pharaoh's priest, Egyptian priest. But God is showing us a new way. A new way has been opened, has been opened. 
Because that's why Jesus had to, had to return to heaven, and be exalted, and in his position, set things in order. Are you listening? Talk to me, are you listening? God is moving his people out of Eli's ministry, and they're growing on their own. Some of them are being fed by, by upper room, by the school of prophets, by a global leader summit, and all these dimensions that, that we have, conferences that, that we have that carry the, the, the dimensions of God. Next week, I'll be praying for the sick, so keep your heart very open because there are some people who have real needs, real needs. In there. No matter how great a Christian you are, you still have needs. You have the need to become dependent on what God is doing among us. How to break through in the corporate, in the, in the corporate uh, congregation. How are we going to synergize? People think we need energy. We need, no, we need more than energy. We need synergy. Because one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. So the Bible is clear that he wants you to have this. Amen. All right. This is the other half of the sermon. Come with me to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua. Uh, this, 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 this is a prophetic uh, next, next one hour. I want to show you your territorial influence in your science sphere. Territorial influence in our science sphere. I believe very strongly that tonight, all the pastors that are here, can I see your hands? All the all the, all of pastors, all right. I believe that God is wanting you to think about territory that He has given to you. Whatever is lost must be found. Whatever been taken must be returned. I sense in the spirit that you really need to take this part of the message seri more seriously than I said earlier, because it's about to happen soon. God is sending forth his spirit to raise up a whole new generation of Joshua. We heard this in the 1980s, Joshua generation, even songs about it. But we are crossing in our day, our time. We are crossing over to the other side. That's why the, there's a unique generation of leading set apart for succession. Write down number one, unique generation of leaders set apart for succession. Meaning these people are ready to rise up, not as a child, but as a mature adult person, so that we can receive the inheritance from the Father. If you look, look at Galatians 4, Galatians chapter 4, God is good to us. He says when the Father set the time, when this boy will graduate, so that he become one who can, once he graduates, what happens is that he can wear his father's ring and authorized work being done. By Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Now I say as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is the owner of everything. 
but he is under guardian and managers until the day set by the father. In, in every aspect of life, spiritual timing is very vital. For a time you are just a, ch a child, then you are trained under guardians and managers until the date set by your father. So also we, while we were children, were held in bondage under the elemental things of the world. But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who, who were under the, under the law. That we, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of adoption, that Christ our Father. Now, in a short moment of time, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to manifest. When you lay these foundations down, the avalanche of deception cannot destroy you. Let me just show you something. That when the sin age was in power, are you listening? The sin age has come to an end. This is the beginning of the end of the spirit of darkness and error. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, supernatural strength will come back to your body. When the Holy Spirit begins to manifest in your life, they will see Christ, they will see the power of God present to, be, to receive healing. Supernatural things are going to happen. Children are going to be talking to angels. Angels will be guiding them protecting them, showing them things that needs to be done. When the prophetic dimension is there in the church, new things will happen. But one text of scripture in the book of Matthew 18, Matthew 18, the last three days of my, of my, my life, till I met you today, I've been going through some horrible pain in, in some, the wounds in my, in my left leg. But the more I think about you, the more I wanted to come back online and see you face to face. Because I believe the supernatural things will happen because of this upper room. You will become connected to the throne. The throne is where all blessings flow out. The throne is where grace is given. The throne is where the, the enemies have been brought down by the power of the Spirit. I want to show you the strategy of satanic power. How deception allows the enemy to move faster than you would want, you want him to. He is going to move quickly because the whole world is in darkness. Those of us who know it must begin to speak it. Are you ready? I say, are you ready? This is how decline comes in your life. Instead of going up, you're going down. All right, Matthew chapter 18. This is the second time church is mentioned. In verse 17, if you refuse to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile or tax collector. This is the first time Jesus mentions about the, 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 the church is in Matthew 16. Then it's the second time Jesus mentions about church. Because he's a builder, he knows what he's doing. The most vital thing that I'm going to tell you from verse 15 to verse 18 is where the power source leaks. 
Instead of going up, you go down. The, the pump is not properly adjusted. So this evening, God is going to do that. I'll show you how sin multiplies so fast. Are you ready? Number one. They hear words. Preaching or prophecy or reading material. They hear words. Number two. But they have wrong perception. Let's say I'm speaking the word of God to you. You have wrong perception. You see it differently. Not what I'm saying. You are getting something that I didn't say. This lady who's been in, who's gone on to be with the Lord. She, she said, uh, last week when you preach, you preach against me. I know. Pastor said, is your name Sarah? No. Is your name, he mentioned the title, name of that, that person, the title. But you, you can see how for 20, 30, 20, 30 years we have been close with each other. But our rules of engagement don't allow us to engage. God wants to set you free and set the church free. How to guard the church's power from seeping away? People will hear the sermon. All right? They hear the sermon, but they have wrong perception about it. And when they have wrong perception about it, they clash. The pastor and the leaders begin to clash. I want you to see this process because it is go it's going to be difficult times in the days ahead. So they hear the sermon and they have wrong perception. And there's a clash in the spirit. Offense occurs. That's what it means to be offended. I totally disagree with you, but you said it as though I believe it. God wants to set us free from every offense, every unforgiveness, because number four, offense that occurs will become angry emotions. Are you listening? This is why the decline takes place. I want to show you afterwards how you're going to rise up from one level of glory to another level. Then you get number four, angry emotions. When you have a lot of angry emotions about the people and the things that's been done, then you have number five, dishonorable thoughts. That means in your mind, you're only thinking bad things about the people who are on decline. They cannot see because they're angry. Offense have occurred. They see it wrongly. They say it wrongly. So number five is dishonorable thoughts. Number six, this is respectful speech. This is respectful speech. You find this when they hear the words, they misinterpret what what, what you are saying as a pastor, as a leader, then they have wrong perception. And because of this, the spirit dimension clashes. Then they develop angry emotion. The more they think about it, the more angry they become. Their pressure goes up. They are looking for scheming a way how to attack their people. This is dangerous. This is not angry birds. The angry emotions. The older you are, the more you are able to hold your emotions. The more mature you are, the more you are able to hold your ups and downs. Dishonorable thought. Number six, disrespectful speech. Let me, let me show you X19. X19. X19.
Let's look in verse verse seven or verse six then. One of, one of the worst things that will happen in, in these last days, the, one of the worst is this, the stage of decline is going to give it to you the answer. One of the major things that God gave to mankind is relationship. When the relationship breaks, everything is lost. When the relationship is restored, everything comes back as normal. When your conscience clears you, you're free to go and serve him. Look in verse 16, verse 6, Acts 9, verse 6. Are you already there? And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. They began to speak with tongues and prophesying. They were in all about 12 men. Now listen very carefully. He laid his hands, the Holy Spirit came, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So the gifts come together with the Holy Spirit. So God knows what to put into your life. He entered the synagogue and continued speaking boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. Can you imagine? He had no place to go, so he went to the synagogue and there he began to teach and preach for three months, reasoning, persuading about the kingdom of God. Luke 9 and 10. But when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way before the people, he withdrew from them and took away the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. I don't want you to get hurt in the final run. You must not trip and fall at the, at the, at the finishing end. How do you protect yourself? How do you protect the church? The Bible says you can teach them about the kingdom of God and for three months and all the stuff can be done. But some were becoming hardened. That some people that are in our partnership that really brings a decline more clearer than any other person. When God gave 12 men to, to the Lord Jesus, one of them was a betrayer. I'm not sure what, what you feel, but I'm feeling clearly house divided in, in itself, by itself, will not stand. Our greatest strength is our people. Our greatest strength is be under the covering of the Holy Spirit. Because when you start to speak evil and you're disobedient and your heart's becoming hardened and they speak openly before the people, Paul withdrew from them, took away the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Sirenus. I believe that God's going to give you an amazing company of people. Hold the vision tight and clear like Nehemiah. Then they will say, let us build together. But when Sanbala and Tobiah came to us, they said, no, we have nothing to do with you. It's between us and God. I sense in the spirit that all these wrong things that we have picked up, giving hurts and being unforgiving and then you become angry with emotions and dishonorable thoughts and disrespectful speech then contention of ways number seven and then you find that you go to another level it's called resistance in the will that means now they don't want to do they challenge you number nine is bitterness you get angry, more and more angry, but you cannot do anything. You become frustrated. You feel defeated because the opportunity is not given. The person says something bad about you and they left and you cannot catch them. And the worst part is when one person is offended, it contaminates the rest. 
Look in Hebrews chapter 11. Sorry, chapter, chapter 11. Hebrews. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. Are you ready? Verse 14. Chapter 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with all men. This is what God wants us to do. Pursue peace with all men. And the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. You and I got to cross this barrier of blindness and begin to see what God is doing. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of the Lord. That no root of bitterness spring up, causes trouble in, in many be defiled. The Bible says one person gets contaminated and has a root of bitterness in his heart, it will begin to affect others. That's why this, is, this, is what, this verse is called one, one and many. See to it, no one comes short of the glory of, of the grace of God. No root of bitterness is, is there. Springing up causes trouble. All the troublemakers are good people with bad ingredients. You and I must understand that the thing that's going to make the church stronger and stronger and stronger is the coming together, the corporate display. Look at Scripture 20, verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to myriads of angels. Meaning, when the church and Zion begins to manifest together, God's kingdom will be established on earth. So the city of God is not just the city up in heaven, but the city of God is going to merge itself with Zion merging with the church unusual. Are you, are you clear? Verse 16, chapter 12, verse 16. That there be no immoral, godless person. Like, like Esau who sold his own birthright for a single meal. For you know that even afterwards when he when he found no repentance, the Bible says he afterwards when he 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 he, he, he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected for he for he found no grace for repentance, though he cried with tears. In closing, let me just share with you, your inheritance is in your house. The oil is in your house. Pastors, hear this very carefully. God's going to give you good people, but don't destroy them. Paul, sorry, Saul, King Saul, destroyed all the good men. Because of the spirit of murder, he just wanted to kill David, ran around looking for David all the time. That was his reign. But the Bible says that David was filled with the Holy Spirit. And every time he played the harp or played the, the musical instrument, the Holy Spirit would come down, set King Saul free so that he would not harm David. I believe that God is speaking to, to you right now in Jesus' name that you will have good people because your, your ground is a solid ground in which God is going to put in more seed so that more plants may come out. It will be a fertile ground that God is giving to you. These people, people are coming this, this coming year. This coming year, many of you pastors and leaders will find the, the man God gave you, the man God gave you, the, the selected people that is going to come into your church and become a source of blessing for all the things that need to be done. 
for the assignment to be complete. Stretch your hands right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the power of your spirit to flow upon each heart. Lord, I know without a shadow of doubt that you are here and you are hearing all that we are saying and you are recording all that we are saying so that in the day when you move by the power of your spirit, Hallelujah. When you move by the power of your spirit, that everyone that's been chosen, who have been called, will be chosen. And everyone who been chosen will become cleansed and sanctified so that they can finish the assignment that God has given to us. Jesus, just keep your hands lifted up. Just keep talking to the Holy Spirit. Come on. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Ori ala la masa kari antara masa dia, kiri ala malam masa kari antara antara sini, lili bili besi kiri ala masa kari antara, sikiri ala la la masa kari. I break the power of the spirit of deception right now in Jesus' name. Let light shine forth. Let the power of the spirit of God cut off every work of the enemy. No trail left for the enemy to pursue. In the name of Jesus, the devil cannot follow you. He cannot keep you down. He cannot frustrate you because he is bound in Jesus' name. You will no longer rise in this ministry, no longer rise in the ministry of pastors and leaders that are here. By the power of the Spirit of God and by the authority God has given to me, I bind your words. I bind your influence. I bind your response that is, that is to create fear. Father, I thank you right now. Let the power of your spirit strike the, strike the enemy and keep the enemy out of, out of bed with us. Hallelujah. Some, some, one, one, I think one of you pastors or, or leaders, you, you have an attitude in your spirit that you feel you want to just take your life and commit suicide and so on. Don't listen to the voice of the enemy because God has great plans for you which he doesn't know. And the day is going to come when some God will send some people to share with you what is in your heart and that will be the day that it will be discovered that God has put something precious in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I sense in the spirit that some of you will be involved in new businesses. You have one, you have two, but, but all these businesses are bringing you cash and God's protecting you in this hour. God says that you must keep this power in yourself and turn the legacy to the next generation so that the sons, your sons and daughters may have the power to make wealth, the power to maintain and manage it and master over it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I can see that you and your husband are traveling outside of Malaysia, going over, over to the other side, or where your destiny is. And there's a lot of encumbrance and a lot of uh, stopping, a lot of people discouraging you, but God said, I've spoken to them, I've spoken to you, and I have spoken, so it shall be done. When God begins to speak, He creates. Say, let there be light, and there was light. God's word we must come to, to you in this manner. Let the Holy Spirit come and touch your life so powerfully that you'll never be the same again. Father, I pray right now, right now, a new thing will begin to happen and our lives will be open to you so that in the days ahead all the avalanche of deception that's coming will not harm us because we know how the devil works. You hear words, you hear the preaching. Number two, your perception of what is being said is misguided by your own perception. Then offense occur because you now clash. And angry emotions, because you think about it, think about it, think about it, begin to recycle in your memory all the bad things that happen, the emotions get stuck. Then the Bible talks about honor, dishonorable thoughts. Your mind 
Honor has a lot to do with the mind, not just what you say. Your attitude is that they are they are God's people and they are they are not to be destroyed or harmed or taken advantage of. When you have dishonorable thoughts, in, then you have disrespectful speech. You start to speak about things and some of them were beginning to say, say it right across. Holy Spirit, Allah, Basadar, and Darindal. Hallelujah. Don't let me pray alone. Come on, all of you in. Yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes. Kuri ala lama sakari andar indar amadosh. Shikiri ala lama. You, you have a person in the house who has been t tested negative for the tested positive for the COVID-19. I can see that I can see your, I can see that mother is struggling to breathe. But I can see the Holy Spirit right now reaching, reaching into the life of that mother. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let it be totally healing, totally healing now in Jesus' name. No COVID nineteen. It's Jesus J E S U S. Right now, right now, right now, right now, let it be healing. Heal that mother right now. Heal that mother right now. She's struggling to breathe and I pray for life to flow. In Jesus' name, somebody who's on our online. You're online and you're seeing this thing happening to your mother and you're afraid. But God said, I will take what, I'll take the faith that you have and I'll multiply that faith so that you can get a supernatural miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Heal her right now. Heal her. Heal her in Jesus' name. Heal her right now. Right now, right now. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a, there's your auntie has breast cancer. But God wants to heal her. When you get back to your home, Talk, talk to her, then I'll pray for, for you for next week. Breast cancer, just been told that she has breast cancer and the whole world collapsed. She's almost depressed. But the Spirit of God saying that I have, a, I have a miracle for your obedience. A miracle, supernatural miracle for your obedience. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray that the six next, next, Till December, and just keep your heart open because God's going to mature your spirit, mature your mind, mature your uh, emotions so that you will be able to be a great blessing to the generation to come. Father, I lift my hands and I thank you for lives of people right now. In Jesus' name, anyone that's been sick right now, heal them right now. In Jesus' name, let the power of the Holy Spirit flow make things happen and let the power of the Holy Spirit guide us to new things and guide us into greater things and guide us into bigger things and greater challenges. We thank you. Thank you for your honor, for your grace upon our life that I can bring the grace of God to, to each one of them here today. Lord, I thank you for the privilege. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your healing power. Nothing is going to go wrong because all any weapon formed against us will not prosper. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, 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 Amen. In a short while, a lot of these notes will be out in the open. Some will be in the form of books. Some will be in the form of uh, study guide. So there will be about six or seven study guides and then three, three or four books. So I, I feel that if I, if, I, if I can tell you all that I know and help you in your, in your understanding. Because, because when the pastor is speaking words, any word, or you can even misinterpret what it is. When the word of the kingdom came, 
uh, what happened? When the word of the kingdom came and he did not have understanding, the devil took away the seed. So when the seed is taken away, then you find uh, you have no harvest. A lot of people sow the seed, but some are bakers. They, they take the seed and grind it and make it into flour so that they can make it. But joy, joy will fill their heart. Shiri Thank you, Lord. So, all right, next, 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 next uh, Tuesday will be important day because I want them to step into the miracle. All right, so they can really help uh, step into the miracle. Yes, you are just one step away from a miracle. Amen. Can you believe God for that? All right. I'll see you in the coming sun, sun, Sunday. Those of you following us. And then I'll see you on Tuesday. Please remember, tell your friends and let, let people know what God is doing in this place so that we'll have more and more people know the information. In closing, let me say this. A lot of the revelations that are coming out now that how COVID-19 can be handled without, without certain prescribed uh, medication, how God brings us back to the nature and show us how natural things can really bring healing and restoration also. Amen. We want to pray for all our friends and our loved ones and none of them get destroyed by it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll see you on, on Sunday and then I'll see you on Tuesday. But remember these things will go on until the end of December. Then we will decide what we're going to do. All right? Amen. God bless you. And have a good night. See you. Thank you very much, uh, Papa, for the preceding word. We pray that this word will, con will bring the cycle of life, will begin a new season in your life. We know that God will do something. You know, tonight's word, I believe, is really speaking to us to make sure the environment does not begin to shape our lives. You know, there's a lot of, uh, I think there was two, three times that Papa talked about how we can go into wrong perception and offense and all kinds of things. Why? Because the environment, the environment we are living in is, is an environment that can easily continue to move us away. But I pray, do not allow the environment to shape our lives, but let our spirit become strong every day, build in the spirit every day, let our hunger and thirst be for God every day. Thank you, everybody. Good night. I pray that you take what God's spoken to us today and continue to build on it, continue to tune our frequency to the frequency of the upper room. Hallelujah. And you will begin to see many, many things happen in our life. Before the year 2021 is over, we're believing for the spirit of breakthrough, intense passion for God. Amen. God bless you again. Thank you for being with us. We pray that you have a fruitful week, an amazing week. God bless you all from Malaysia. Have a God week. Thank you. Sun in who?